Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. So sometimes you get the... Uh, it's easy to forget, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the House of Commons as well. And the Liberals are struggling to find somebody that can go out in front of the party that now that Justin Trudeau seems to just be dialing it in. He doesn't seem to be too invested in being the leader of the country if he has to work for it. In my opinion, I mean, that's what it looks like. It looks like he's just, you know, showing up a couple of minutes a week, flying around the country in his private jets, does a, what, a, a half an hour in some hotel or in some company, and then you don't see him for the rest of the day living large on the, uh, on the dime. So these other cabinet members try to take down Pierre Polyev because you remember in the liberal mindset, it's all about the culture. It's, it's not about the culture. It's not about, it's about the personality, right? They don't want, they don't want you to believe, they don't want to believe that you care about having good quality of life. They think that, that you're just being tricked, right? That somehow you're only following the words because that's how they think, right? They don't think about performance. They think only about what they can say to you. That's why everything is a stall tactic with them, right? It's all coming around the corner. It's all going to be here sometime tomorrow, which never comes, right? That's why they've been talking about the same problems, the same things for, what are we going up on now, 18 months? So I'm going to show you how uh, Pierre Polyev quite easily handles these uh, guys, people. Uh, before we get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends. Okay, let's get into it. First. Well, we do have a common sense conservative plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. While this Prime Minister is not worth the cost after eight years on inflation, with all his multi billion dollar announcements, he is like the pyromaniac pretending to be a fireman, except the hose is spraying gas on the inflationary fire rather than water. According to the Scotiabank's chief economist, these inflationary deficits are driving up mortgage payments. Doesn't he realize that all of his spending is putting the heat and the costs on our homeowners? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This government has a plan for an affordable and prosperous future. We have a plan that is focused on ensuring that we are building more homes faster, making life more affordable, and growing an economy that works for all Canadians. The Conservative leader has no plan for affordability other than a bunch of taglines. He has no plan for, for addressing the environment. He has no plan for the economy. We believe in ensuring that Canadians have a fair chance to succeed, and we are acting on that. Hey! Am I the only one who thinks that he, he acts like a conductor that you would see at like some orchestra or something? I mean, what, what, what is he doing? What is, what is this? As for the no plan and all that other stuff, taglines, that's all you've been saying the whole time. I roll up my sleeves and I got the Canadians back so that we can put a plan into action that will have a plan. We are going to talk about having a talk about having a plan. These uh, liberals, they just... If he has such a plan, why does he got to read it off a piece of paper all the time? I don't understand the theater, why they think the theater is going to convince you that you're not hungry, right? Why they think the theater is going to convince you that you're flat broke. Why they think the theater is going to remove that fear and that terror of all of the economic issues that you might be facing. We, our plan is to axe the tax and cap the spending to bring down inflation and interest rates. Here, here. We will have a carbon tax election. And people will choose whether they want to quadruple the, ca the tax to 61 cents with the NDP and the Prime Minister or axe the tax under my common sense leadership. And in the meantime, people can't afford to eat. So will the Prime Minister show a little bit of compassion and accept my common sense demand to axe the tax on farmers and food? The Honourable Minister of Housing. Mr. Speaker, it is laughable when I hear the Conservative leader talk about affordability. He mentioned in a previous question some of the concerns he has around housing policy. His plan to build more homes is to cut investments in home building, is to raise taxes on those who are building homes, and when it comes to actually changing the way cities build homes, his deputy leader held a press conference to explicitly declare that Conservatives were siding with the NIMBYs when it comes to zoning reform. We are going to do what's necessary to put money on the table to build more affordable housing, create market conditions to get more homes built, and change the way that cities build homes so we can solve the housing crisis. I don't know what an NIMBY is. I'm not going to bother looking it up. I'm sure it's something that is, uh, 
makes common sense and the liberal party just can't stand it because they don't have a, they don't have a clue what they're doing right i mean there's not a, ever 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 been a far left government that has an economic policy that works never once the idea that you would the, the, the problem with it is that you have to take the control away you have to take the power away you need the control to come into one body and so you can't have people with with influence with money that's why you always see those countries uh, never have the the prosperity it's a um, law of diminishing returns the more controls you put on the less that it grows right as for putting taxes on the homeowner there's no nothing that the first of all we're gonna put money on the table we're gonna make a plan we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna everything with the liberals is always on its way it's never here it's never happening unless it's the carbon tax then that's going on you full stop unless you're from Nova Scotia or some other re uh, region where they might lose seats and then all of a sudden you're there'll be changes They'll, those will happen right away as for putting taxes on people who are building homes there's no guarantee that giving them the GST off while telling them the carbon tax is not adding cost, which is just a video by itself, is going to make the house cheaper. It just means that they'll still sell at a market. It just means that they paid less to build it. it. doesn't mean that you're going to get it for less. I think that if the, if the liberals really wanted to make things cheaper, they'd just stop making inflation so bad. They would crack down on the people who are driving rents up through the roof. They would cut the carbon tax. They would at least pause it. They would be doing something to make an impact instead of just saying it's all some gigantic conspiracy about, you know, floating on the air. And if, it, if you know, a bird hadn't a turn left in China, we wouldn't be in this mess. The Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Because the housing crisis, Mr. Speaker, under his role as housing minister, the amount of a paycheck necessary to make payments on an average mortgage has gone up to a record smashing 64% from 38%. And he is the only one, along with his prime minister, that wants to raise taxes on home building. A massive carbon tax on the building materials that go into assembling those homes. So, will the prime minister, instead of hiking the tax, accept my common sense demand to axe the tax on farmers' food and houses at the same time? The Honourable Minister of Infrastructure and Housing. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's interesting because he's actually put his plan on the record, and his plan includes putting the GST back on apartment construction for hundreds of thousands of middle class homes in this country. He has one of the worst records in the past decade of anyone when it comes to getting homes built when he had the position responsible for housing in Parliament. Mr. Speaker, while he was Minister, they built exactly zero new apartments, zero uh, co operative units, and only six affordable housing units across the entire country. We are helping get hundreds of thousands of homes built in this country and we will do what it takes to solve the crisis once and for all it's a crisis they they created right i mean they literally stood up not less than a year ago saying that the federal government's not responsible for housing so why would all of a sudden uh, pierre Polyev be responsible for housing if justin trudeau and the liberal party wasn't responsible for housing how come the conservatives and pierre Polyev are and if you tell yourself that that makes only sense that just means that you're not paying attention to the issue and you're actually part of the problem if you want to solve the problem, you have to be honest and you have to be direct. You can't just tell yourself that it's all based on whether or not the this guy makes you happy or whatever it may be. I mean, this is a serious thing, right? Now you've got single mothers who are looking at rent that has gone up 1600 from from 800 I mean, this is serious problems here, guys. And, and the Liberal Party is doing nothing but theatrics and talk and talk and talk. They want to mumble under their breath. They want to threaten you. They want to pretend like they care about you while they do absolutely nothing. Hundreds of thousands of homes. He hasn't built a single solitary one. They've been in power for 10 years. It's ridiculous. Just get tired of hearing the same old thing. I mean, they, it's like they honestly believe that if you listen to those words, you're not going to understand how much how much more you're paying to live every single solitary day. And if you do pay, make a notice, well, then it's never their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. It's been 10 years. It's not anything the conservatives did. It's all something the liberals have done. And I don't care if it's 100 things or if it's one thing. It's completely and totally 100% their fault. And anybody that supports them is culpable in that guilt. All right. 
I uh, want to thank you all for listening. I would appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell all your friends. I'll talk to you next time.